Hi everybody, I wanted to um, just show you how to use these paint strips from Cadence. So this is their regular hybrid acrylic, but in little in little pots. I love the way the pots open because you press down on the little um, piece there and then lift the lid. And these are really good, really intense colours, like properly, pig really highly pigmented. And you act these actually go a long, long way. So if you're somebody that wants to try Cadence or somebody that wants every colour, but just a small amount, these are a really good way to go. So I've got one of our mouldings. These are silicone mouldings. And I'm going to show you how to make it look like this. Now, I am no artist, trust me. I can craft till the cows come home, but paint not in a million years, but this is, it's just, so it's applying what you use for ink, but with paint, or it's something that you would do with an alcohol pen. It's that kind of thing. So it's something that's familiar to us, but we're just using a different medium. And so I'm hoping that this video, if you're, if you're a little bit worried about trying something different, this is the first thing that I did with these moldings. So I've got some just white hybrid acrylic, on my mat here and I'm just going to make sure I'm getting loading my brush up like that and then I'm just going to go in and put a white base down and the reason I do that is just because these mouldings are a little bit grey and I just want a nice white base okay so just hybrid acrylic they're hybrid because they will go on multi-surfaces which is great so you're not buying one paint for glass and one paint for ceramic and one paint for wood and one for MDF and you're not doing all that you're just using one paint which is great because what we want as, as creatives is we want as much diversity within our products as we can get. So we buy one product, you can do all these different things with it. That's, you know, that's one of the things that we like because we want to have that variety, but we don't want it to cost us a fortune. Right, so I'm just going to dry that off really quickly with my heat gun just so I've got a, a dry surface. Right, so we've now got our little moulding that's just got white on, okay? It's not a solid base, it's just a base. So I'm now going to go into my colours. So let's see what colours we've got. We'll do a slightly different colourway this time. And what's lovely about these is they're almost in colour family stories. So you've got a super, super light one, then a light, then a medium, then a slightly darker one, a darker one still, and then a bright one. So you've got all these different, this is like buying the best inks ever because you've got all those gradations of color, which is fab, okay? So we're gonna start with our lightest color. So I'm gonna use a different brush and I'm gonna go in, let's go in with this color so that you can see it a little bit, bit better on camera. So I'm just gonna get some paint in here and I'm just gonna go over the whole thing. I'm not gonna do the leaves, but I'm not worrying if I get pink on the leaves either. Okay, because we can cover that up later. So I'm not going out on purposely trying to waste the paint by covering the whole thing, but I'm not worrying about colouring in between the lines, if you like. And this is really alien to me because I'm quite a precise person. I like to make sure that I've got that precision and I, I love symmetry. So this for me is kind of like a bit, uh, not colouring in the lines, but you get over it because <laughs> it is literally just a bit of paint. And you just have to go and play, you know, just play. Maybe get yourself a mould and some paper clay and just make some little pieces like this and then just have a play. Right, so I'm going to dry that off now. There we go. And I'm not even going to worry about whether that is a... Com oh, no, I am. I'm going to go in and just do nearly was just gonna say I'm not gonna worry about it but my brain just went nope Melanie that's not who you are just do it woman <laughs> I tell you I am definitely my granddad's granddaughter because he was at my man and my dad to be fair they were both like that right so the next color I'm going to go into is this slightly darker one here and you will get like almost like a little bit of like an oily residue it's just the binding agent so just mix that in just with the tip of your brush and I'm going to take this and I'm just going to go in where it would be darker so if I was coloring this as a flat image 
I would have added my lighter shade and now I'll be going in with my mid-tone. Okay, so I'm going into these little crevices here and I'm just allowing that flat brush to just pull up slightly and I'm using the lightest of touch so I'm getting like a feathered effect. So if you've ever seen me demonstrate alcohol markers, this is what I call like the flicking effect where you just you kind of put your brush down and you just flick it and you end up with these little feathered edges and that's what makes it look so good. So delicate touch because we're working on quite a small piece here and we're just going to go around and just add a little bit of that in there. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So I'm now going to go into my next colour, the dark next one along, which is darker still. So I'm going to put a little bit of this out and then we're going to go in again and this time we're just going to push that colour. Actually, that one's not quite dark enough. I'm going to go for this one because I want to create real depth in here. So I'm just going to go in and just push that and literally just go around and push that paint into those little crevices there, okay? So right in, so you're picking the paint up directly on the tip of your brush, like that, so your paintbrush is quite vertical. And then you're gonna go around and you're gonna push this in here, like this. And then you're gonna pull that up. Okay, and we're just gonna very gently pull that color up. So into here, if you can't see it properly, move your work round. And this is the this is the bit, you know, when I talk about the pain barrier, when you're doing something new and you look at it and you go, oh, that doesn't look very good at all. Trust me, it will. Okay? Because I was that person. Oh, I'm not sure about this. I don't think I've done a really good job. And then you wipe your dry brush it and you're like, okay. <laughs> that works. Right, just going to take some of that paint off my brush and I'm going to go back in with my mid colour. In fact, I'm going to go back to my light colour as well and just pick a little bit of that up. And then we're just going to go in and just soften that out. Too much on there. So take a little bit off. You're using the smallest amount of paint anyway. So wiping a little bit off doesn't really matter. I have to say you could always have a piece of paper at the side and get rid of any excess on that, then you can create a background. And sometimes, you know, when you do that, when you create a background, it looks awful as a whole thing. But when you die cut it, or you cut it down, you know, it just, it, or you use it on your scan and cut, it looks completely different. So any opportunity that you get to create something else from the mop up, if you like, is always good. Right, so I've now, I'm happy with that pink, okay? For now I am. So we're going to go in and do the green now. So I need another smaller brush if I've got one, yes I have. And we're going to go in with the greens. So clip all your lids down again. Oh, like that, just like that. Brilliant. And you've got all those colours in one little strip like that. Also, if you go into highlightcrafts.com, underneath the description of this, there is a download and it gives you all the colour codes and all the colours as circles. If you've got a circle die, you can then cut them out and stick them on the top. Or if you've got a scan and cut, there's an SVG file that goes along with it. So you can cut all the labels off. So if you then decide that you love painting and you want to do more of it, you can go back and go, right, I want that one, that one, and that one in the full sizes, and you know which ones they are. So we've thought about that for you as well, because we're crafters too. Right, so I'm gonna start with this paler green here and pick a little bit of it up. Now, we remember we're going over a colour now because we've got pink there. So we're going to go over, then we're going to dry it off and then we're going to put another coat on it. Just because we've got those different colour, those different um, colours underneath it. Okay, so we're going to do that. And then we're going to paint this one. And I like using these flat brushes because you can literally push the tip of that brush up to that edge and it gives you that perfect edge, that perfect finish. I'm treating this as a leaf down here as well. Might be a petal, but in my head it's a leaf. So that's gonna go there like that. Okay, and then here as well. Like so. And then in here, so just pushing that flat end into there, okay? Right, so I've got my basic green down, so I'm gonna blast that off. And 
then I'm going to go back in again and just do a second coat with that. So just the tiniest amount of paint and just go back in and now we've got a better coverage than we had before. So I would rather you did a couple of thin layers then slap the paint on, try and get a thick layer because when you heat it it will want to bubble. So thin layers, a bit like when you're glossing, it's the worst job in the world and you have to make sure that it's completely dry in between but it looks fabulous when it's finished. So let's go in and do that and then do in and do that. So using my brush, just slowing down, pushing that flat edge into that molding and then we've got our green. Now, rather than going straight into drying this off, I'm gonna pick up another green now and I'm gonna go straight into this darker color, tiniest amount, mix it with a little bit of that paint that's still on my brush and then make sure that I've got the tip with the paint on and then go in and then we're going to do that flick thing again. So we're just going to put it down, pull it out, put it down, pull it out, put it down, pull it out. And it gives you a really nice soft effect. Make sure you get right into those little crevices so that the green meets the pink. You haven't got a gap in between and just do that. So a little bit more on there. I'm going to go straight in with the raw colour this time I think, get it a little bit darker and each leaf can be slightly different because that's what they're like. I'm going to go back in here with just the dark as well and just add a little bit in there like that and I'm, I'm wanting to get right into here because I've got a little bit of light paint there and it doesn't look quite right because this dark bit will be underneath that petal and as an alcohol colourer, colourer in -er, I like my, I like it to look right, otherwise it doesn't and it drives me crazy. So right up to that edge where that pink starts there and then just very gently pull out. So I am, as a non-artistic person, I am pretending that my brush is a pen because that makes it easier in my head. So just imagine that this is a nib rather than a brush and you've got the ink right on the tip of it and you're just putting it in and pulling it out, putting it in and pulling it out like that. Okay, super cool, super simple. And then if you want to, you can wipe that off and just with a dry brush, just go in and just soften that out a little bit. So just very gently, just a little bit, that paint that's just still a little bit wet, you can just pull through, okay? like that. If you've got a little bit on your pink, you can go back in and touch that up, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Right, so we're going to dry this off now. So that, at the moment, looks okay, but it does look a bit of a mess. I'm not going to lie, especially around here where I haven't got that bit, but we're going to get rid of all that in a minute. So let's blast this off. And you will move your work, you know, you're not working with a camera above you, trying to catch the right angles. And also, don't Use your heat gun on top of my log because it makes it warp. Just saying. There you go. Lesson learned for today. Right, now what we're going to do is take a brush and I'm just going to make sure that that's nice and loose like that. And then we're going to pick up the tiniest amount of white paint. And this is where we're going to make it look shabby. So a little bit of white on there. Take, so take it off on your kitchen roll and then you're going to go over this and just work in one direction. Don't swirl it, just backwards and forwards like this. Getting that, what this is what they call dry brushing because you're brushing with a dry brush and a very tiny amount of paint, okay? And you're just gonna go over like that. And then when you've done that, turn it round and just go into those little areas that you weren't too sure about and pick up that white. So now I'm going in the opposite direction, just creating almost like that cross hatch finish to it. And then round here, just go in with a tiny bit more, like that, and just go in and just pick up those little areas all the way around the edge. And that just gives it that shabby chic look to it. But the tiniest amount of paint 
you know having those different colors makes such a difference because you're not having to put a black out or a brown out and mix the color to make it more tonal it, it just works and then you've got that beautiful flower there that you can then stick on top of a box it could go on a card especially if you're using paper clay because they're so lightweight but what a difference that makes from something that was just that color to something that's really pretty and I'll bring in the next one as well and you've got those two look there so that's how you can create beautiful decorative elements just with your regular Cadence hybrid paint. Hope you've enjoyed it and I hope to see you very soon. Take care. Bye. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.